Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you that are here with us in the sanctuary at St. Paul's United Methodist Church and those who are with us worshiping online virtually through Facebook and YouTube. We are so glad that we can come together, be together, and worship together our glorious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I appreciate all of your prayers for me and our family as I was on vacation last week. It was a very restful staycation, and I appreciate your support and your prayers, so thank you for that. Melissa Jensen is going to come and share some announcements with us as we begin. Good morning. We will have our check-in for our prayers and uh, check-in time on Wednesday at 11 a.m. That happens on Facebook. Uh, if you want to join us on Facebook, uh, that's it comes on at 11 a.m. Also, uh, if you are at home and you want to send us your prayers and praises, leave them in the comments of this and we will read them on Wednesday. If you're here in the church, I've put some green prayer cards out on the back table, which you can fill out and um, put into the offertory box and we'll collect those prayers so we can collect those as well if you'd like to add them for anything we'd like to uh, pray for on Wednesday. Also, I uh, want to let you know two things. Uh, we have a save the date. The UMW is going to do an outdoor craft and vendor show August 7th, August 7th. There'll be more details to follow. Also yesterday, a successful food drive was held um, in benefit of our food pantry. Uh, the St. Paul's uh, Girl Scout Troop, uh, number 1835, coordinated a food drive for all the Girl Scouts of Jersey Shore. They collected just shy of a thousand pounds of food uh, for the church. So yeah. we want to thank all who donated and all who participated. So that's a, that's a great boost for our food pantry. And uh, we will have uh, midweek worship on Wednesday as well. Uh, at night, 7 p.m., and then we will also have um, uh, next week for service, we'll have those sign-ups. If you have any issue with sign-up, always feel free to contact us. Many of you have, so I want to let you know, please know those avenues are available if you have any issue with a sign-up. All right, I want to thank you very much. Thank you so much, Melissa. Let's take a moment to quiet our hearts and focus on Jesus as we come here to worship and lift up his holy name. And Lydia is sitting in for Barbara Still. Mick and Barbara on vacation this week. And so we thank, uh, thank you, Lydia, for being here to support us. So listen as she pray, plays our prelude.
Amen. Thank you so much, Lydia. And we do pray that Jesus would lift us up as we lift his name on high. As we gather together, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise of your presence as we gather in Jesus' name. Come and make your presence known to us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Move us to love you and to love one another wholeheartedly as you desire. Come and awaken our hearts and minds to love you and worship you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our worship team is going to lead us and sing for us our opening hymn, Rise Up, O Men of God. seek the Lord together in prayer. Oh Lord, we thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you for your call on our lives. We thank you for the privilege of worshiping and serving you as our King, as our Lord of Lords. We ask, Lord, that you would be with us and bless us that we might be a blessing. We thank you for all of your good and gracious gifts. And we ask, Lord, that you would enable us to not take them for granted. We confess to you, Lord, all too often we have taken you for granted and not been grateful, thankful. Oh, Lord, we come with thankful hearts and we confess our sin to you and pray that you will make us new and right in your sight again, a fresh and clean start by your grace every day and today new mercies each morning we have in Christ and so Lord we ask that you would come and fill us with the heart of gratitude love and service Lord we ask your blessing on those with particular need today we pray for those who are sick and shut in those in the hospital those recuperating from being in the hospital and from surgeries, from shots, and vaccines. Lord, we thank you that you watch over us and care for us, protect us, and you have healing, awesome, almighty healing power. We ask, Lord, that you would do wondrous things according to your power and pleasure, that you would give us comfort and strength as we seek to serve you. Lord, we pray for those grieving the loss of loved ones today. We thank you that you hold each one in your loving arms of embrace. 
Lift them up on everlasting arms. Lord, we pray that you would be near to those who, all those who call upon you, all those in special need, and we just think of them and lift them up together in intercession. Lord, we thank you for our church, and we thank you for all that you're doing in and through us. Even in these COVID times, we know that you were at work, that you have a purpose for this time. It's a challenge to us, but we know that you were in the midst of even this. We pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders. We pray for all those in our families. We thank you for our youth and children and their leaders down in Sunday school even now. We ask your blessing that the power of your Holy Spirit might rest upon all of us, that we might serve you with joy and gladness, zeal and vigor for the sake of your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. And as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank you all for your gifts and generosity as we go through this time. Um, I, I just loved coming in yesterday morning. I wasn't expecting it, but to see Sue Lindstrom with all the Girl Scouts gathered, helping her out with the food pantry, what a tremendous ministry we have in this food pantry ministry that Sue oversees. And um, with all those who help her, her team, it's good stuff. All the ministries of our church are supported and sustained. And um, in the next week or two, our finance committee chair and leadership is going to give you an update on how we've come through the Easter season. And after the letter and appeal we gave you about a month ago, we want to give you a report and an update on that. But for now, let us continue to be faithful as God is faithful to give as he has given to us with glad and sincere hearts. And as we think about that and put ourselves in a posture of offering our marvelous praise team, well, Judy and Janet are going to share an offering in song. Amen. I hope that you see the evidence of God's presence all over your life. Thank you so much, Judy and Janet, for sharing that marvelous song with us and blessing us with that witness in song. What a great message that was and what a great song that is. So thank you. If you have your Bibles with you, and or on your cell phone, you can turn with me to our scripture text this morning. We're looking in Romans chapter 12. I want to read for you Romans chapter 12, and I think I'm going to read verses 1 through, I don't know, I'll let you know when I stop. But um, there's just too much to contain it to verses 1 through 11. It's good stuff. Always. But uh, Romans Chapter 12, beginning with verse 1, hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves, your bodies, as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, 
but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we who are many form one body. Each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. Boy, it's kind of hard to figure out where to stop, you know. It's all, all great stuff. Anyhow, well, we'll pick up on other stuff. But it, I want to think about God's plan for his family, us, his people, the church. He wants us to be a fully functional church family together. As I was on vacation this last week, I came back and I felt like, how am I ever going to catch up? There's so much to do. And all this stuff that collected that needs to be done after a week, you ever feel like you're falling behind? You need to catch up because you've fallen way behind on all the things. Amen to that. <laughs> right? I ran across a great story about Red Skelton, uh, the, the comedian back in the day. How many remember Red Skelton? I used to go over to my grandparents' house sometimes when we were down in Ocean City and watch TV. We watched Lawrence Wilk and Red Skelton. And I loved Red Skelton. And um, talk about catching up, keeping up, efficiency. Anyhow, this was in the day be of uh, big cars, right? Detroit would put out these huge boat-like vehicles that we'd drive down the road with fins on the end and everything. They were the size of boats or tanks. And anyhow, gas guzzlers, inefficient, fuel sucking. You could hear them slurp as you, as you drive down the, the road, right? Back before the days of hybrid, electric, green, fuel cars, economy cars. Anyhow, said it's, the story's told about how back then a makeup artist was applying makeup on Red Skelton before a show, and with uh, he asked him, Mr. Skelton, I understand you have a new car, a new Cadillac. What kind of mileage do you get? Skelton replied, well, it's this way. The other day I was filling up at the gas station, and the young man came to my window and said, 
Would you mind shutting off the engine, Mr. Skelton? You're getting ahead of me. <laughs> Trying to keep up. Sometimes you feel like that in ministry and all that you have to do around the house or around the church. There's always more to do than time to do it, especially in these COVID times. There's always more people to call and check up on, more messages to prepare for me, and prayers to make for people. I wish I could be even more efficient. Over the years, I've tried to become more and more efficient and effective in service and ministry, but there's just so much time. There's just so much of me to go around as it is with you. But the great comfort and encouragement that I have from reading the Bible and seeing God's plan and purpose for us, his church, is that we are all in this together, that I am not alone in this business of serving God in ministry. We are all called to serve Jesus, our King. We were doing our Lenten study, our church-wide study, seeing the unseen guest with the, the idea that what would it be like if Jesus were to physically walk into our sanctuary and be present with us in worship? Yes, we know that spiritually Jesus has promised he is here. Where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, I am in the midst of them. The Bible, the psalmist says that God inhabits the praises of his people whenever we praise God. He is enthroned in the praises of his people, the Bible says. We know that he is here and Jesus is here. Anything can happen, we've said. But do we really sense his presence as we come together in worship like we should? Are we really aware that Jesus is here, that he is near as we gather together, whether it be online or in person? However, Jesus is with us. If we really saw him as present, I believe that it would impact us individually and corporately in many ways. We've said before in our series that it would impact the way we eagerly and vitally worship him. It would affect the way we love one another, lavishing his compassion and care on one another. It would impact the way we would hang on every word from his word. We would pray with eager anticipation and communication and I have one more chapter in the book by David Maines that I didn't get to during those seven weeks of our Lenten study that I'd like to pick up on, kind of like Lenten study plus one this morning. And that is the theme of service, Christian service. If Jesus were sitting right here with us, I am sure that most or many of us would like would probably come up to him and say, Lord, so great to have you here. What can I do for you? How can I help you? What can I get for you? How can I care for you and for your people? I think we would be probably tripping over one another, trying to get to him to offer ourselves, yes, living sacrifices, spiritual worship, we would be very aware of the privilege of serving him as our Lord and King. As we think about this, I have a, ran across another quote this week from D.L. Moody, evangelist of several generations ago. Uh, D.L. Moody, evangelist, preacher, author. On this theme, Moody said, a great many people have a false idea about church. They have the idea that the church is a place to rest in, to get into a nice cushioned pew and contribute to charities. Listen to 
to minister sermon, to do their share, to keep the church out of bankruptcy. That's all they want. The, the idea of work to them, actual work in the church, never enters their mind. Well, unfortunately, in today's North American church, that's true to a large extent. There's so many of you that are in service here at St. Paul's, and I am so grateful for those of you that have heard the call of God on your life and serve him eagerly and faithfully in the various ministries that we're able to do together. But the reality is, is that every single member of a church, not official members, but anyone part of a Christian community, the body of Christ, the church with a capital C, every Christian is a minister, not just preachers, not just clergy, every member ministry serving the Lord together. There's the focus for today. As I read the key verse for today in Romans chapter 12 is verse 11. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep up your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. I want to lift up three factors for zealous, eager, glad Christian service this morning. And each factor begins with the letter C, commonplace consolidated, and contrasting. Those are our three points. But let's think about looking out for the other guy in the pew. Not watch out, but look around and look to care for and serve the other guy as we serve the Lord. In order to serve Jesus, we must see, first of all, that we are all commonplace. We are all commonplace. Well, that's kind of a strange thought. What do you mean, preacher? Commonplace? That sounds pretty dull, unextraordinary, mediocre, usual. Aren't I special as a child of God? Yes, absolutely. But there's a sense in which every single one of us, in relation to every single one of us, is commonplace. By that, I mean, to mean that many of us tend to think of ourselves too highly. Many of, our, many of us tend to think too highly of ourselves. And in verse 3, as I read, For by the grace given me, Paul says, I say to every one of you, nobody left out, every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. And later on, verse 16, do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Pride is an insidious problem in churches. Christian service has no place for prima donnas posing prideful posturing in leadership and service. Christian service is not the place for competition. Who's on first? Who's the top dog? I'm the greatest after all. The church, Christian servants, is no place for power plays, my way or the highway. If I don't get my way, I'm going to take my ball and go home. Jesus is Lord, the head of the church. It's his way, not mine. It's not about me. It's not about you. Jesus is the Lord, and he is king. Jesus said to his disciples, you want to be great in the kingdom of God? Learn to be the servant of all. Learn to be the servant of all. This is a place to belong, but it's not a place. It's not a place. 
for me to say, well, for all I do for these people, well, for all I do around here, I should get more, more appreciation. I should get more attention. I, could get, I should get more respect. trap that churches often fall into is elevating the clergy over the laity. There should be no status distinction between pastors and people in the pew. Pastors sometimes love to fall into that. Don't put me or anybody, any past pastor on a pedestal. Yes, when we're singing the cantata, I... <laughs> Hate to say it, but I have to stand on a step so I can see over Nelson, but <laughs> I hate that for many reasons. Don't put me on a pedestal. I'm no different. I'm no better than any of you. Just a servant of Jesus Christ. I have a, a freedom prayer that I put over my, uh, on my desk to remind me of this attitude that I should have in Christian service without a pedestal. It's actually from this particular study from David Maines. It's a Christian freedom prayer. Lord, and a good prayer to pray every day, for example. Lord, I renounce my desire for human praise, for the approval of my peers, the need for public recognition, I deliberately put these aside today, content to hear you whisper, well done, good and faithful servant. Well, I took that off my desk, but I'm going to put it back. Or maybe leave it here. But think about it. He must increase. I must decrease. There's the credo, the, the theme John the Baptist, and every Christian servant. Because, you see, the cross is a great equalizer. The cross is a great equalizer. We all have a common place that makes us all commonplace. Let me say that again. We all have a common place that makes us all commonplace. And that's at the foot of the cross. You've heard the expression, it's all level ground at the foot of the cross. Amen? There is nobody who gets to stand taller or stand... I love saying things like that. <laughs> nobody gets to stand tall. Anyhow, it's not about wealth or prestige or fame or money or any kind of social pedigree. It's all about Jesus. And we are all equal, common level at the foot of the cross. Listen to what Paul writes in Philippians chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. We must therefore have the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that which was in Christ Jesus, who being the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped or hung on to made himself nothing, taking on the very form of a servant. What do we have in common in this common place here at the foot of the cross? We have Jesus. And that's all that we need in common. So we make it our common goal to please him, to serve him with gladness. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let us come together. Well, as we serve the Lord, we do it in common and as commonplace. And secondly, as we serve Jesus, we must be consolidated, as we read in verses 4 and 5. Consolidated. 
put together, held together in unity. Listen, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We're all united together in Christ. If we're going to be serving the Lord most efficiently and effectively, we need to be united together in Christ. There must be unity in the community. You've heard me say that before, unity in the community. Again, Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 4, speaking of the church, be completely humble and gentle. You know, don't you rich wish you could rewrite that? Be a little bit humble and no. Okay. Be completely humble and gentle. Man, it's tough. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Unity is a gift, it's a given that we must maintain and keep. Paul says, for there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We are one in the spirit, one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored for As Jesus' heart for the church, as he prayed there in the upper room, he wants us to be one. He wants us to be in unity. Actually, the word for fellowship in Greek is the word koinonia. Koinonia. Perhaps you've heard me say that before. The Greek word emphasizes community, commonness, common, common unity, Actually, the word koine in Greek, that is the root word for koinonia, is the word common or common currency. A coin, as we use it in our vernacular today, is a common currency, right? That's where we get the word coin from. In this world, in this time, in this day, so full of division and dissension. Everything we hear is all about the political polarization. I can't stand to watch the news anymore, right? Racial tension and unrest, church divisions. When it comes to essentials or non-essentials, when it comes to things that we need to agree on or not essentials, it's okay. You know, during this time, should we leave the windows open? Should we sing during COVID times? Do we have to all wear masks? Or we, you know, these are tough questions and they are pulling us, pulling us apart. But we must come together We must maintain the unity of the spirit in contrast to the world. We are united together in Christ. And we belong together. We belong together. You belong. If you are a part of the family of God, you are welcome here. You belong. Every member is essential. We are not in this for ourselves. We do not work independently in our service of him. We must work in harmony when we do, we profit from each other. Together, we all make one whole, united body together. We work uniquely and harmoniously as his body to be his hands, to be his feet, to be his voice. Since we belong together, we share a common life, a common ministry, a common power, And as a consolidated whole, we eagerly serve Jesus. We need to be one to serve the king. The hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you, Paul says. All 
of you, all of us, are essential workers in the kingdom of God. Non-dispensable. Think about that. We must be consolidated as we band together in common service. But our service must also be contrasting my last point. Yes, unity is not uniformity. We are together, and yet none of us, by God's design, is the same. All of us are different. Some are different than others. But all of us are different by God's design. As we read in verses 6 through 8, you have many gifts according to the gift given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion with his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. With all these different gifts and graces, we serve according to God's plan. Various and diverse contrasting gifts of the Holy Spirit with different personalities, different talents, different interests, different passions driving those talents. You know, <laughs> I got a big kick out of my granddaughter, seventh grade, and somehow in seventh grade, she and her friends got a hold of an online version of uh, personality inventory. You know, the MMPI that you have to take sometimes, MMPI, multi-something personality inventory. And so she was going around, Andy Jane was going around giving a, a brief form of this to everybody in the family. and. Uh, Actually, in screen time and Zoom, on a Zoom call, she gave it to me, and I've taken it many times, but um, she was getting a great kick out of, oh, well, you're a JPEI or whatever they are, MPC or whatever. Um, and <laughs> Casey, even, my seven-year-old grandson, he said, Grandpa, Pop Pop, I'm an E, I'm an extrovert, I'm an entertainer. And I said, you sure are an entertainer, Casey. I love it. But you see, all of us, by God's design, have at least one gift according to the grace given us. God chooses which ones according to his plan and design. We're all wired differently with different functions. Not all are preachers. Not all are teachers, leaders, or evangelists. And the key is that we need to discover where each of us fits in service and in ministry according to God's plan and develop those gifts to be fruitful and fulfilled. We all are participants according to God's grand design. And some in Christian service whatever area and level of service, some burn out in service trying to do what they're not gifted for, right? Somebody who's an introvert wouldn't be fulfilled being a greeter, welcoming everybody in church, right? That's a great gift. For, that's a great place for extroverts. But some in ministry burn out because they're trying to do it alone by their choice or other people's choice. Some are exasperated and exhausted because too few are doing too much of the work. God's plan and purpose is that we all are in this together, serving him as king with gladness, faithfulness, and eagerness. Praise God for his grand design. I have a perfect example of this, and I want to give Doug Beekler my uh, closing moments. Doug is the chairperson of our missions team, and he's doing amazing things, doing great things. I'm so blessed by all that the missions team 
is doing. So I want to give him a chance to give a testimony and a witness about some of the things that are taking place through St. Paul's in outreach and missions. Doug? Good morning, St. Paul's. I uh, humbly come to you to kind of give this uh, review of what we've done in missions this past uh, COVID year. Uh, we haven't been in church much. I have been uh, watching from home, haven't had many reports. We don't have the weekly bulletin to read the upcoming events of the week or the month. And uh, many, of may, many of you may have think that uh, we've, we've just kind of sat back and waited for waited for the COVID to go away. But uh, in our uh, mission field, and our ministry field that's here at St. Paul's, we've actually been quite, uh, quite active. And I just kind of like to review some of the things that's been going on and some of the things that uh, we have planned for the future. And it's, uh, as I've always said, the, uh, the missionaries uh, in St. Paul's are the folks in the pews who pray for and support what ministries and missions we do in the field. Um, First off, uh, our, our big mission event is, of course, is our Haiti Haiti trip, and uh, uh, oddly enough, we made Haiti in uh, 2020 in the year of COVID. We we, we uh, made it there and had a very successful trip that you all supported, uh, and then the shutdown came. So really, we missed Haiti this year, just this past uh, January February. Uh, we elected not to go until things kind of calmed down a little bit on the uh, COVID front. But I want to point out that we, as a, as a community, as a, as a church, have supported that mission financially uh, through your, your gifts and uh, through the ministries that give to missions. We've uh, supported uh, the, the clinic, uh, which is, is a fantastic mission there with a, a doctor and nurses right there on the mission property in Haiti that we, we go to uh, annually. We support a clean water program by we, I mean the monies that we sent. The clean water program is a, a program that uh, sends uh, uh, the truck out to pick up uh, the, the families with their jugs and they come back, they fill them with clean water and then uh, distribute them back along the road and they disappear into, the, uh, into their little homes in the woods. And that clean water program keeps many of them out of the clinic because they're not drinking river water and, uh, and uh, contaminated water. Uh, St. Paul supported the uh, continuation of the GOAT program in Haiti. Uh, it's, uh, we, many of you uh, contributed to buy goats. It's a pay it forward program and now it's going well and we uh, send money over for Animal Husbandry Fellow to help, the, uh, help keep the goats alive and, uh, and help the uh, families uh, in their breeding program. We uh, support, uh, we, St. Paul, support a sewing school. These ladies go to school for almost a year and they come out of it as registered seamstress to, uh, to, to, to make a living. In, uh, in Haiti, in the music program, which is my favorite, um, we've sent uh, and take, taken instruments over. Uh, one of my favorite stories: we were there last year, and uh, at the Sunday worship, and uh, James, who is the drummer in their uh, um, uh, praise band, was drumming with uh, a carved stick from a tree. And uh, Al Primrose had sent me with a bundle of uh, used uh, drumsticks. And we hadn't distributed the gifts yet. Uh, we were going to do that that Sunday afternoon. And I couldn't resist but to reach in the bag and grab two new drumsticks and slip them to James. And the smile on his face and it was the drum and the, the instrument just came alive. The fact that he had real drumsticks and not something carved from a tree. But I digress. Uh, again, a blessing from St. Paul's. Some of the ministries that have, have, uh, have been curtailed a little bit here, the Lexington House, uh, we can't visit there, and yet St. Paul's uh, congregation brought together and, uh, and, and brought Christmas gifts that the Buckleys were able to deliver to, uh, to the uh, uh, Lexington House, even though we're not visiting on a monthly basis. The Maple Leaf after, after School Program, a tutoring program, is up and going strong. Uh, as we speak right now, the ladies are down uh, with a dozen of our children doing uh, uh, Sunday school in the midst of this COVID. Uh, the uh, Rise Against Hunger program was canceled last year and I believe this year, I've heard nothing of it, because uh, you have to get together to, to fill the bags, but we have financially supported through our missions uh, funds um, 
the, the program so that they can buy the food and still distribute it. It's uh, hopefully we'll get back to a hands-on event uh, in the church uh, soon. Um, other other uh, ministries in the midst of the COVID restriction, the pet ministry here had uh, a, a, a drive-through event last fall. Uh, the, the youth had the trunk or treat event that was just uh, a, a, a success. The Christmas tree lot. We didn't have as many Christmas trees, but we still had a Christmas tree mission oriented. The monies go to, to different ministries and missions in the church that we all support. The chocolate uh, uh, ladies with the chocolate factory. Um, uh, all that stuff still took place even though we didn't feel it and we didn't get big reports of it here uh, every Sunday. Uh, just it, this, this accumulation of all this that has gone on, all these ministries and all these people uh, giving is, uh, to me, uh, quite, quite heartwarming. Um, the family mission trip and the youth mission trip still on hold due to the COVID restrictions. Uh, maybe in the fall they'll lighten up and we can, we can do an away trip. Uh, just not real sure about that right now. Something that the St. Paul's mission team has done uh, uh, we, uh, since we can't travel and go places, we've focused uh, on local needs. We've been uh, we've uh, teamed up with uh, Freddie Fiorentino and his Cypress mission, and uh, we've been working with Bethel AME Church in Asbury, um, helping them with some repairs on their church. And I think uh, this is the room. I, I meant to have the before and after picture, but this was a room that you could literally, when you open the door, small room, 12 by 12, you can see daylight outside the room. Uh, it was used for storage trash and uh, they were looking for a Bible study room in their in their facility and it took us a year but over a year this is what they they've got this last week so they're going to move some chairs in and start having their Bible studies in a in a quaint small little room and uh, and missionaries from St. Paul's uh, worked with Cyprus uh, on a Saturday here and there a Wednesday here and there to, to make that happen um, the, the other part of the Bethel AME uh, relationship we have is uh, they, they run a little building. It's called the Ford Center, and in the Ford Center, there's a food pantry, and in that food pantry, there's also a clothing closet. Uh, every other Saturday for the clothing closet, every Wednesday for the food pantry. Again, St. Paul's Missionary, we help uh, kind of rehab that place and clean it up a little bit, do some painting. We have uh, ladies from St. Paul's that go every other Saturday and help with the uh, clothing closet. Um, and our own Sue Lindstrom with our uh, fantastic uh, uh, food pantry here has is, is helped uh, Pat at uh, Bethel AME kind of organize her food pantry and get it, get it run a little better and we're still working with that. And hopefully the food pantry will be open on Saturday soon uh, for that community in Asbury. Um, one of the things that, uh, that really struck me is how St. Paul's mission uh, and uh, discipleship going to work with these folks uh, at, at uh, Bethel AME, uh, kind of a cross church uh, get together, is we, the ladies give out the clothes, uh, the free clothes of the clothing closet, uh, a lot of work sorting donations and the like. They have it set up, it's, it's like going into a department store. But in that, other ministries at St. Paul's, uh, the crocheting ladies, the, the pocket crosses, the prayer squares have been distributed uh, to people that come to the clothing closet. Uh, the prayer shawls have been given out to, to, to people in need uh, in Asbury from St. Paul's. Uh, and we even had a request for a baby blanket, a uh, baby shawl that they do that was uh, shared. And these people know that it's coming from Herbertsville, New Jersey, Brick, New Jersey, St. Paul's, um, and uh, uh, it, that to me is just kind of a, a, a very interesting interlock between uh, our communities, and uh, we hope to keep that up. Uh, we hope to worship with them in person soon. Um, other than that, that's kind of what's been going on, and then what's coming up uh, ahead of us a little bit here. Uh, and the, the Got to mention St. Paul's missionaries helped with the new floor in the uh, food pantry here at St. Paul's. Helped install that. It was donated by Fulfill and uh, Freddie and uh, Cyprus uh, helped install it. There is finish up here real quick. There is a six-member mission team from St. Paul's heading to the Bahamas here in a, about a week and a half, April 29th through May 5th. We're going to be installing new windows. We'll roll through a couple of those. This this is the house. 
18 months after the hurricane uh, struck the Abacos uh, in Greenfield Cay, this lady still has boards on all the windows in her house. The only daylight comes through is uh, the, the, the door and the sliding door. Uh, it's, uh, uh, we, we met this lady in church the last time we were there in Green Carroll Key in uh, early December this last year. Uh, she invited us for dinner. We went over and had a uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful sharing of dinner with her and uh, committed to uh, buying windows and installing them. Well, buying, buying windows and getting them to Green Turtle K was a three-month affair, but they are, the, the windows are in place, and a team is going to go down and, uh, and help, help that family out and put the, uh, put the windows in and do some painting for her. And then we're also going to team up with some other nonprofits that are finishing up some building and, and homes uh, that were destroyed during the hurricane. And uh, we'll be doing that, uh, like I said, uh, in about a week and a half. And uh, we were also invited, as our team is in the, uh, uh, is to, to come to church. We, we worship with them when we go. And uh, they asked if we could participate in their Sunday school program. So uh, I just happen to know somebody that's pretty good at that. Uh, my, my wife, Sharon, will be uh, putting together a Sunday school lesson for, uh, for the kids in, in Abaco. But all in all, I, it just, uh, it, it, I just wanted to share. I know it's, it haven't been up here in a long time. And, haven't uh, heard much. I just want everyone to know that, that, that we're very active in the missions and ministry field here at St. Paul's, and uh, we know that it all happens because of your prayer and support. Thank you. Hey Amen. Thank you so much, Doug. I, I so love you and so love what you're doing and all that's being done for the sake of the Lord through our missions teams, and uh, perhaps you've always wanted to go to the Bahamas. Uh, it's not exactly going and sitting on, laying on a beach. It's a lot of hard work, sweat, and so forth, and missions. But what a great ministry going on, all these ministries, Asbury Park nearby, and uh, all the things that are taking place. Perhaps, as Doug was talking, you might have sense God tugging on your heart to volunteer and plug into all this, all these diverse ministry opportunities. Pray about it. We are all in this ministry together. We can have an effect on this world through God's calling for us to be in service together. Here within the church and without, let us serve him as we have so much in common and yet commonplace as we are consolidated, united for service in contrasting diversity and gifts and ministries. God wants you in service. Let's pray for Doug. And when, when are you going to the Bahamas? Permission next Sunday? Oh, to get commission. Forget it. We only do one. No, that's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Be happy to do that. Um, yes, we go along with you. And um, let's just pray for all these service opportunities and for what's happening. Lord, we thank you so much for your love and grace, for how you've blessed us to be a blessing. We thank you for all of the diverse ministries that are taking place even in this difficult time. We long for that time in which all the restrictions and constrictions might be lifted and we can really go after it, but yet, Lord, we thank you for your call on each of our lives. Oh, God, we know that you have made us one. Help us to maintain that unity of spirit in the midst of all the things in this world in our society that are pulling us apart, we pray that you would hold us together, that we might serve you in faithfulness and gladness. We pray for Doug and his teams going out, whether they be in local ministries in Asbury Park or food pantries or going off to Haiti or the Bahamas. We thank you for the great opportunities that you've given us to be your servants. Oh, Lord, you are worthy of our service. You give us the strength 
and abilities. So please, Lord, be exalted in all that we do. We ask for your blessing for the sake of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to respond with our closing hymn, and our worship team is going to sing for us a great song of response. Here I am, Lord. let us all go into the world, into the mission field, which is the world, to be a blessing 
as we have been blessed. And may God's grace, mercy, and peace be upon you to flow through you to all those that you come in contact with today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.